Hello dear people, my name is Volker Schmitz, I'm sitting here with Dr. Arthur Rakimov and today we want to discuss diabetes, di diabetes in relation to breathing retraining and we also want to talk about certain kinds of diets which uh, could also enhance uh, the healing process, the uh, possible healing process of this condition. So what are your experiences and uh, theoretical background when it comes to diabetes, mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Rakimov? Yes, diabetes mellitus, like we are talking about type 2 diabetes here, uh, is, uh, as we know by now, that there are two methods how we can solve it. And one method would involve breathing retraining, which is, for example, Buteka technique, yes. or some other normal breathing method. People can use for low DIY devices. And it can be also solved in using diet. So, two kind of different approaches. Actually, I knew about first approach for a long time, since I had students. <coughs> 10, 12 years ago, yes. who had diabetes, and I had many people who were uh, taking insulin, some other medication, mm -hmm. and who managed to get rid of their condition completely, just by breathing retraining, while still keeping the same diet. So I had such students 5, 7, again, 10 years ago. And uh, it also uh, was known to Dr. Budek and his doctor, because that was the first kind of medical professionals who started to use uh, would take a breathing technique in Soviet Union and Russia in the 1960s, 70s. And we already had hundreds of people with diabetes. And one doctor, actual Dr. Samatyosova from Krasnoyarsk region in Russia, she was a chief endocrinologist of the like, very large part of Siberia, mm -hmm. uh, area with millions of people, who applied to the Buteka technique okay. on many people with hormonal conditions. Of course, diabetes would be the most common one. And she also, like with her research, and we did research of other doctors. She made a conclusion when people with diabetes achieve 25, 40 seconds for the mm -hmm. body oxygen test with like the, about normal medical parameters, normal breathing, day and night, 24 hours per day. And these people don't require insulin anymore. Because if we try, <laughs> the blood sugar would be too low. Very low. Yeah. And that's actually the danger of the, uh, kind of not the danger, but the important part of the method of the technique that once uh, our students start to do breathing exercises, we should we expect that slowing this down. Happen at some yeah, point. the effect of medication that sure. we take, that can be insulin, can be some other lower blood sugar reducing medication with mm -hmm. reduced blood sugar levels. The effect of this medication becomes stronger, and that's dangerous because normally we expect yeah. we take like certain dose of insulin so that we have normal blood sugar level. Now we start breathing exercises. If we continue to take the same amount of insulin or whatever other medication we use, yeah. then the blood sugar then gets too low, which is very dangerous. dangerous yeah. These days, Buteka actually described this effect to tell to his doctors in 60, 70, 80, that this is actually much more dangerous because hypoglycemia people can die from. Sure. Because hyperglycemia is like very long-term accumulation of negative effects mm -hmm. due to too high blood sugar on kidneys, on extremities, on eyes, and so forth. Complication of diabetes. So, and, but in case of uh, low, to low blood sugar, it can be fatal. So, and such cases unfortunately happens. What is big difference these days? That these days diabetics use devices. Sure. They do it's much easier. Some of them can do one, two, even tests every day, yes. testing their blood sugar level. And that allows them to control how much medication they require for this particular day because the situation is, can yeah. be dynamic, can be changed, and this is particularly true during breathing retraining. Because once they start slowing down their breath, right from about the start, most people with diabetes yeah. can reduce the insulin intake by about two times. And which so is, it's much easier for us now. Which no, is also because of yes, the modern Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, because of these changes in uh, technology, they are mm -hmm. like 30, 40 dollars or euros yeah. devices people can buy. And it's, it's strips also very, very cheap. It, that allows people to do this test. And so the, and before when they start with breath retraining, they can use these devices and they can adjust the insulin dose. So that's the initial factor. Now, of course, another factor would be that's important for people with diabetes to have really good practice. And really good practice would include, like in my view, probably around 3-4 hours per day of time spent on breathing and physical exercise. Mm -hmm. so these two factors are okay. very influential. Because this condition is much harder than, let's say, people who have asthma, sinusitis, bronchitis, mm -hmm. like certain conditions which we call the relatively easy ones because it's a hormonal condition first of all 
And second, of course, factor would be that we have to target these people kind of to have it as a long-term lifestyle when we achieve changes in the breath pattern because we need to maintain it for many years later. Yeah. And that is possible when we include physical exercise yeah. as very important central part of the lifestyle because in the long term, very few people would do like, let's say, even one hour of breathing exercises per day because it, first of all, it becomes automatic. There is no need to do formal sessions like mm -hmm. two, three, five years later. Mm -hmm. But physical exercise, and this is what Dubutek and his Soviet doctors what they were teaching for already many, many decades, the physical exercise in the long run becomes the central factor that allows people to maintain a certain level of their breathing as we measure it in this, using the CP yeah. test in the long run. And therefore, but it also, let, let me interrupt you for a second, it also depends a lot on the lifestyle. If a person anyway moves a lot during the day, then uh, this person could do a little bit less of the physical exercise, isn't it? So, for example, Total someone who, who goes yes. to work, uh, who walks to work, or, or does a lot of work at home, or has a physical demanding kind of work, yeah. like with cars or whatever, yeah. like so this person would need less. Yeah. So Few people may have like a lot of walking involved or some physical labor involved during exercise. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, these people would need much less uh, formal exercise, but what I'm talking about here is kind of to, the kind of trying to convert all type of exercise into intensive exercise, how many hours. So uh, sure. the ratio can be maybe, it depends on the type, maybe two, three times, so like one hour Intensive exercise can be equivalent to about three hours of walking. Mm -hmm. But if somebody gets three, not three, but maybe a few people might have like five, six hours of walking every day, then of course physical exercise, uh, extra sessions of physical exercise are not necessary. Yeah. So that's one part. So that's about breathing retained, and this is what something that I knew a long time ago. And again, like all my students who achieved, who made changes in their breath pattern by following the program because it's quite hard every day to practice breathing physical exercise later to maintain this level. So that's a technique which relates to breathing retraining only because we would still continue to have the ordinary diet which can include carbs and other things.